Hey class, how y'all doing today? I know it's a little weird, we're not in an actual chemistry lab. Um, the principal says he got new computers and he wants all the teachers to use them. So, um, here we are right now. I just made a quick presentation on the subject we're doing today. And then we'll get to the science, okay? So, if you go onto the website, you find my uh, PowerPoint presentation, just open it and we'll go from there, okay? So, examining Le Chatier's principles. Um, the big thing about them is that we have to remember about equilibriums. Uh, a couple of classes ago we talked about equilibriums and just basically just to help you recall what it is, a chemical equilibrium is the state when the concentrations of the reactants and the products have no net change over a specific amount of time. This means there can be products and reactants in your system at the same time. So I just showed a little example. You have salts and water that create hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. If you can see from the little arrow in between the water and the hydrochloric acid, it's pointing to both ways. Usually in science, we call that, we have the double arrows call it like that. However, I couldn't find that on the computer, so that's what it's going to be for right now, okay? Just means that it's at equilibrium. There's an equal amount of products and reactants at the same time. So, in our system, we actually have water and salt at the same time we have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. A while back, early in the 19th, 20th century, someone actually devised a way that you can manipulate this equilibrium such that you could have more products than reactants, or you could have more reactants than products. If you can see from the next slide, it says a little French looking dude. This guy's name is Henri Louis Le Chatier. He was a French chemist um, from the early 1900s to the early 20th century. And he did create the principles of what we're doing today, how to manipulate a chemical equilibrium. That have been called universally as Le Chatier's principles. Not only are they renowned in chemistry, they're also, they're also used in other things like economics. Um, you'll also find that equilibriums can also be achieved using money and stuff like that. But we're not going to go into that. This is chemistry. Chemistry is much better than economics. Henry Louis, he was just a French chemist and he actually created Le Chatier's principles. Basically, it states that if an equilibrium faces a change in the system, then the equilibrium will shift in order to counteract or reduce the change. Um, there's three ways that it can be done. You can either have concentration, pressure, or temperature change. Now, just to keep in mind, if you're changing one of those things, the other two must stay the same. They can't they have to be remaining constant. So we'll just look at concentration right now. For our concentration, we must realize that we are adding more of a certain product or reactant into the equation. If the system wants to counteract it, that's basically the definition of Le Chatier's principle, the equilibrium will shift to reduce the amount added. Hence, if more of a component, whether it be a product or reactant, is added to the system, the equilibrium will shift in the direction that lowers the concentration of that component. So, I just have a little quick example. We have ammonia, the creation of ammonia, which is just nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia, NH3. So, I just gave three questions for all of you. I don't expect you to really answer them. We're going to take them right now. If more ammonia was added to the system, what will happen? What will happen to the equilibrium? Will it shift to the right or will it shift to the left? Second question was, what happens if we add more nitrogen into the equation? The third one was, well, what happens if we remove the ammonia? Well, when will, what will change? So, for the first one, we're adding ammonia into the system. So the equilibrium is going to shift to the left. So the 
concentration of ammonia is lower, so the equation, the equilibrium will resume. Because we're adding more products into the system, it's going to create more reactants to get rid of it. It wants to reduce that amount of change, so it's going to create an equilibrium. With B, we're adding nitrogen. That's a product. So it's going to create more ammonia to reduce that amount that's been created of nitrogen, and so that the equilibrium occurs again. But with C, we're actually removing some of the ammonia. And that's the little problem. But we just have to change the equation, the definition of Le Chatier's principle. If you remove the component of the equilibrium, then the opposite effect will occur. The equilibrium shifts to the direction to create more of that product. So for C, the equilibrium is going to be shifted to the right so that the ammonia will stay, so that we actually have more ammonia. So with pressure, when the volume of the container changes, then the pressure of the equilibrium is affected. This will also affect its concentration. If we predict the shift, we can examine the volume of the container. If we reduce the volume of the container, the system will reduce its volume by decreasing the moles in the system. So, back from our friends from ammonia. We know that one mole of nitrogen and three molecules of hydrogen create two molecules of ammonia. So, if we were to actually reduce the volume of the container, it's going to want to shift to the area where there is less molecules present. So, because we have two and it's smaller than four, the equilibrium will shift to the right. Conversely, if we actually increase the volume of the container, then it's going to want to have the equilibrium shift where there are more molecules. So, if we have a system that has four molecules compared to two, it's going to shift to the left so that we have more molecules. The next one is temperature. Just some quick definitions we have to realize the definition. Um, we haven't really started on what def um, temperature really. So, just two things I want you to realize. If energy is given off on the reaction, we call it exothermic. If energy is given is needed to end the reaction, if it's taken in, then we call it endothermic. So I have two equations for you. Each one is an endothermic and exothermic. We have nitrogen and oxygen to create NO. We also have sulfur dioxide and watt and oxygen to create sulfur trioxide. Now each of those reactions have two special properties. We just have to realize that we're adding, let's say we're just adding temperature. We're adding more heat into it. So if you remember there is that delta H and a number, when well, that number is a positive number, then this means we have an endothermic reaction. Energy is being sucked into the reaction to create the product. So we actually create your as a reactant. So we put it on the left side. When we actually increase the temperature, it wants to get rid of that energy, so the equilibrium will shift to the right. And finally, with uh, the next one, then obviously it's going to be an exothermic reaction. Because it's negative, it's, ne it's, an, ex it's an exothermic reaction, which means it's a product. Energy is a product that's being created. So if the temperature is being increased, wants to get rid of that extra energy, it's going to shift to the left. And uh, that's about it. It's a quick presentation, eh? I just want you guys to have fun. And uh, we have some assignments I have to hand back for you guys. Some assignments I want to give to you. Just to keep you, just to remind you guys, um, if 
if you need help, I'm at my office. My website's up, so you can actually go online and just um, email me and just ask me any questions you want. Also remember that the podcast is up, I think we're at number 37 right now. So you can go on the podcast and just listen in to see what if you don't understand it. And also just follow directions on the website, and this will be on YouTube. And you can go on there. Okay? Well, I hope everyone works out. I'll have those assignments to get back. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Okay?